Earlier this month, residents of the Detroit Lake School District were asked to go to the polls and vote on a $59 million building bond proposal for new elementary and renovations to the other buildings in the districts. The school district residents pretty much rejected it with a resounding no, 58% voting no, why of course 41 to 42 percent supporting the plan and the turnout was quite light only about 35 percent of voters turned out which to be honest is about average it's about what you can expect for a special election however i know some people in the district were anticipating more people coming out to vote so what's next then for the detroit lake school district well sometime in december they're going to come together they're going to meet and we will be voting on something again in the near future. I don't know if it'll be a year from now. I don't know if it's going to be six months from now. And I'm not 100% sure what that plan is going to entail, what's going to be in there. I don't know what lessons the school board and administration have learned from this very first election. But I will tell you one lesson I hope they learn. And that's actually about running an election on election day itself. I don't know about you, but I waited in line in the polls for probably a hair under 30 minutes. And I felt lucky. I was in the short line. Now, there were only two polling places, the middle school and the high school. And in a special election like this, I don't really have too much of a beef with that because the school district's footing the bill for this election, which makes you think, why wouldn't you just hold it during a regular election then when it's a lot cheaper? But I digress. The point is, they did hold it. Those are the two sites. My biggest beef is with the polling times. Two to eight o'clock. A six-hour gap to vote? When you wanted 4,000 something people to cast a ballot, I have a big problem with the polling times selected. I don't know why the polling times are selected the way they were, and I really have no clue as to whose suggestion it was for that, but for whoever suggestion that was, don't listen to that person anymore, and don't take that advice from them anymore. Because there's only one logical conclusion that I can come up with on my own as to why I think two to eight was chosen as the polling times, and that was to limit the amount of potential no voters. Do I know this was the reason? No. Someone can say, well, Jake, it was just cheaper to hold the election for six hours rather than having the polling place open for 12. Because in my opinion, it should have been open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., no exceptions. That should be the polling times to truly give as many people a chance to vote. But I digress. Why do I think two to six was used? Why do I think that would be to negate potential no voters? Well, let's look at what category would be the most likely to vote no. You're talking about elder residents that probably no longer have kids in the district that are probably retired and usually get up early and go to bed late. Who's likely to vote late in the afternoon, that two to eight o'clock time frame? Those with kids, because guess what? They get up in the morning, they got to get to work, they got to get the kids to work. But later in the evening when work is done, they've picked up the kids, they've gone to their whatever after school events, that's when they have time to vote, when frankly, a lot of older people might just be getting tired. That is the only logical reason I can come up with as to why you would have the polls open from two to eight. Is there another reason? I would love to hear it. And don't tell me it was to save money because you held a special election which cost you money to start with. So if it was about saving money, you would hold this election next November with the regular county, state elections, and so forth. But heck, we might be voting another building project next year at that time anyway already. But if that's the case, and this was just a test run, I'm ashamed of the school district for that because I don't really think that this ever had a snowball's chance of passing. From day one, $59 million was frankly too much money. I had sticker shock looking at the price before I even saw what was in it. And I think at least 60% of the population had the same feeling, which is what makes me think, who really thought this was a great plan as far as a passable plan? Maybe this was the best plan as far as to solve all the district's needs, but what's the point of putting that plan together if it's got no snowball's chance and you know what it's passing, and that's what this did. We'll see what happens now when the district revamps the plan. But I hope they learn two key lessons. One, you're not going to get a Cadillac in this. And two, you better figure out how to run an election on election day, or it's only going to get it worse before it ever gets better.